P.S. Before we jump into this video, don't forget that you can support this channel over on Patreon and get access to all my videos and podcasts early before they're released to the public, and you get access to the secret podcast as well. So, patreon.com slash Lona Christina. Okay, enjoy! Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. First off, I hope that the audio is okay because my microphone was making like a weird clicking noise in the last couple of videos, so I took it off and we're gonna see how we go without a microphone. <laughs> Anywho, welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do a video today on some of the wasteful things that I still buy. The thing with zero waste is it's really not about a final number. It's just this whole transitionary period of making your life a lot more sustainable and a lot more intentional with what you're bringing into your life and what you're supporting with your dollar. I think the phrase that's become really popular recently, the idea of we need a lot of people doing zero waste imperfectly more than we need a handful of people doing zero waste waste perfectly. I think that really sums up the way that I feel about it and as much as there are certain areas of my life that I've really cut down my waste to pretty much nothing, there's definitely other pockets of my life that do have some sort of waste and honestly I'm a normal human being like sometimes things come up, sometimes I mess up. With all the things that I haven't been able to find access to a sustainable swap I really do ask myself like is this necessary in my life and what is a better way of doing it if it is. I think just by minimizing the things that we are buying on a regular basis that has such a huge impact in and of itself. Then also like I'm just continually improving and I think that the things that I'm buying today is gonna be different than the things that I'm buying a year from now today or the things that I was buying a year ago today. I just like the idea of making low waste living as accessible to everyone as possible. I still make mistakes, I'm still a human, I'm not perfect even though sometimes the internet might make it seem like I am. First thing I buy on a regular basis is berries. I think a lot of people look at berries as like coming in those plastic punnet squares. What I've found to work best in my life personally is I have access to a restaurant supply store out by where my parents live. So it is like a decent 35 minute drive from where I am. So every couple of months while I'm out there visiting them, I can pick up this huge, huge, huge box of locally grown, which is another thing that you can do to reduce your impact if you're finding items that are locally made. I get a huge, huge, huge box of locally grown frozen berries. The box that they come in does have have a really big plastic bag inside of it but the reason that I do buy these ones is that it's the biggest size that I can possibly find and that way I'm using less plastic than buying like individual berry punnet square things and also it saves me money which I do really enjoy because who can afford six dollars for a small punnet of berries every couple of weeks I just I can't so the other thing that I try to do is I'm lucky enough to live in a place where blackberries are actually considered an invasive species. Everywhere that you're driving in Washington, or at least in the Seattle area, you'll be on the side of the highway and it's literally just lined with blackberry bushes. So when the summer hits, I try to pick as many as I can and then I freeze them so that I can have them for a couple of months. And then once I'm out of those, I have to go and find some frozen berries somewhere to kind of last me through until the next summer. So getting them either from a restaurant supply store or as of late, just because I haven't been out to visit my parents parents in the last little while, I have been buying the biggest size of berries that I possibly can in the frozen section of my grocery store. And I've also been trying to buy those frozen bags sourced from a local place as well. The next item that I buy is different supplements and multivitamins. I do still take a multivitamin. I, as a vegan, need to supplement B12, so I kind of do that by doing it through a multivitamin. I also just want to make sure that I'm getting in nutrients because honestly, I am a lazy human and sometimes I just don't eat vegetables. It just happens, I'll admit it. So taking a multivitamin kind of like gives me a reassuring feeling that I'm at least getting some things in. So that's the way I go about getting all of those nutrients, but you can get them through food. So you don't really have to be buying a multivitamin. I think it's really just about finding what works for your life. So for me, that's what works best for me, but you could be getting your B12 through things like nutritional yeast. You could be getting different vitamins and minerals through all of the vegetables that you're eating. And then the other supplement that I buy is a probiotic, a vegan probiotic, because most of them aren't vegan. Fun fact, lactobacillus, it's got a really long name, is derived from dairy. Fun fact. Number three is online shopping. Now, when I talk about online shopping, I more specifically mean thrifting online, buying secondhand items online rather than in a shop. For me, this is what keeps living a secondhand lifestyle really accessible. So if there's something that I need that's like really specific and I know it's gonna be difficult to find it in a secondhand shop, I either look for a responsibly made sustainable company to buy it brand new 
or I'll go and try to find a secondhand resource to find it online. Sourcing from places like eBay or Depop or Poshmark or ThreadUp or Buns or Facebook Marketplace or LetGo or OfferUp or any of those online secondhand resources that you can find. I do often pick up things from there, especially when it's like things like shoes, it's kind of hard to find them in thrift stores, at least in my area. Things like technical gear or ski gear, things like that. If I'm looking for something that's super specific, I will look online for secondhand things. However, to kind of counteract this whole video, <laughs> something that I recently decided that I'm no longer going to be buying secondhand online is books and that's where I can bring in today's sponsor Audible because they're wonderful. So I recently got rid of my TV and we've just decided we don't really want one anymore and so I've been kind of on this quest to use the time that I used to use watching TV to absorb and learn as many new things as I can so whether that's listening to patio patio <laughs> Whether that's listening to podcasts or audiobooks, I have quite literally felt this huge like weight lifted off of my shoulder of feeling like I'm not wasting my time anymore and I'm actually learning new things. Dare I say it, it has changed my life. I know it's only been a month, but it's probably one of the best things that I've ever done for myself. I don't need TV. I just don't need those distractions. So that brings in Audible where I've been soaking up all kinds of new knowledge and trying to listen to as many books as I can this year. And you guys know that I've been using Audible for a long time. I've actually mentioned them before even have the opportunity of working with them. I genuinely do love listening to audiobooks. It makes it so much easier to absorb knowledge. Right now I'm about to start listening to Deep Work by Cal Newport, which I'm so stoked on. I've heard incredible things. I'm so excited. And then up next for me is Draw Down, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming by Paul Hawken. I had to read that off of my phone because it's such a long name. But that's another one that I've heard incredible things about. So if you would like to try Audible for 30 days free and have access to one free audiobook and two free Audible originals, because Audible has this huge selection of books that are exclusive to them. Another one that's in my list is David Goggin's book because he is just a force to be reckoned with and I would like to absorb all of the knowledge from him. So if you want to try Audible for free for 30 days and receive one free audiobook and two free Audible originals, you can go to audible.com slash Sedona. Or if you live in the US, you can text the word Sedona to the number 500 500. The next thing, and this is kind of within the realm of supplements, but I feel like it's its own category in and of itself. Protein powder, I actually did recently realize that PCC in Seattle does have a bulk vegan protein powder option. Honestly, it's kind of expensive. But again, I also feel like that's something that not everybody will have access to in their local area that might just be kind of exclusive to people who have a PCC in their area. So a solution that's worked for me is I've tried to find the biggest size possible in the protein powder that I personally like. The one that I buy has three simple ingredients which makes it even more sustainable. And I buy it in a five and a half pound tub. I'll link the one that I was using before down below, it's from Naked Nutrition, but I actually just recently ran out of my protein powder and I decided to try a new brand from my protein. The thing that I was getting with the old one is it came in like a big protein tub. I think my theory originally with that was that it could be recycled because it is a more durable plastic, but at the end of the day, that's if it gets recycled. The way that recycling works is it's so dependent on your local area because it is, like the way that recycling works is it's a business, right? So if that material is not worth enough money at that point in time, it's not going to get recycled. So if that material that you're putting into the recycling bin, if it's not, well, first of all, if it's not washed off and clean, and then second of all, if that specific material isn't worth enough in your local area or like in that day's market, because they basically sell the materials to different, like your recycling plant will sell the materials in bundles. And if that material isn't worth enough, then it just doesn't get recycled. So I kind of realized that and I don't really know what the lesser of the evils is. Let me know what you guys think. My top three options as of right now is I would get the Naked Nutrition one in a tub or I would get the My Protein one. You get half a pound more of it and it comes in like a flimsy bag, like a plastic bag, which theoretically I don't think can be recycled at all, unless maybe, maybe, maybe in a commercial soft plastics facility. And then the third option, which I just discovered yesterday, is Vivo Life. I am in no way affiliated with any of these brands, by the way. Vivo Life just announced that they have launched a Kickstarter because they're going to launch all of their vegan proteins in a home compostable, like literally backyard compostable packaging, which is super exciting. So I'm going to link their Kickstarter down below if that's something that interests you because I know I'm personally gonna back it because that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do in the long run. But for right now, I used to get the Naked Nutrition one and now I'm getting the My Protein one. I'll link all three of those below if that interests you. 
and fits with your life. The other thing is I can't stress it enough, if you're living a vegan lifestyle, you don't need protein supplements at all. You can definitely get it through your diet, just like with my lifestyle, it works the best for me personally. The next item, and this one's kind of debatable, but it is still wasteful, is canned objects. Cans can be fully recycled an unlimited number of times in their life, but I mean, there is some waste there, and especially if you're gonna be shipping something that like has liquid and has density to it, it's gonna use more CO2 to be shipped and transported than that item would be if it wasn't like cooked and sitting in a liquid in a can. But just out of convenience, every once in a while, I do buy canned beans, and I also buy canned tomato sauces, canned tomato paste, and occasionally, if I'm in a Pinch, I'll buy like a canned soup as well. And then kind of off of the same tone, I do buy the odd item that comes in a glass bottle or glass packaging of some sort. Even though glass can be recycled, again, it's heavy. Oftentimes it's filled with a liquid, which requires a lot of energy to be transported. So obviously it's a little bit better than plastic, but it's still not great. And I think that it's kind of seen as this thing within the zero waste movement to just like see something that's packaged in glass and be like, oh, well, it's okay then. But I think again, it comes down to the whole idea of asking yourself, do I need it? Do I need like 10 items in my daily repertoire that come packaged in glass or do I need like five? Because that will bring down the amount of waste that you're creating and the amount of emissions, emissions that you're creating. Some of the things that I do buy packaged in glass is coconut aminos, apple cider vinegar, which I really want to start making my own of actually. Sometimes I buy sauerkraut. I try to make my own as much as possible but again sometimes I'm just strapped for time and I don't have time and I have a busy life and tahini as well which also I want to start making myself but I just haven't yet number seven if you watched my bathroom essentials tour then you know this one toilet paper I try to buy a sustainably made one but yes I do buy it I don't have a bidet but that's definitely something I would like to look into in the future number eight is something delicious that we all enjoy and that's chocolate I do enjoy myself some chocolate it's definitely one of those complicated things because a lot of the stuff that comes in the bulk bins it's been hard to find like fair trade certified ones and all of that because chocolate itself has a lot of like ethical dilemmas behind it. I do try to hit up the bulk bins as much as I can if I have access to them, but when I do buy something packaged, the way I've counteracted that is there's actually a chocolate company based out of Seattle called Theo's Chocolate. It's literally made around the corner from my office. My office actually gets like the odd bits and ends that they can't sell that are like maybe were molded funny and would have become waste. So I do try to like steal some from my office and they literally just get it delivered from down the street, which again, smaller car carbon emissions because it's local. But I do every once in a while buy one of their bars in the store and again, the way I counteract it is it is like locally made fair trade stuff number nine is my skincare routine it's not perfect what I've done is I've really like pared down the number of things that I buy and I try to buy from sustainably packaged and harvested and manufactured companies and with minimal ingredients I did try the whole like DIY route for a while or at least mostly DIY route some things went well some things didn't go well it's one of those things that's gonna be a journey for me and I think I would like to ultimately get to the place where I am making everything or even like not needing to use anything I really have pared it down though to the point where I only use skincare like maybe three times a week versus twice a day every day so that's made a big difference but I'm not gonna go into depth about my skincare routine I'll do like a whole video on that cuz I've been talking too long and I know I have and I'm sorry and then the last one this is not something that I buy on a regular basis but because we just moved I bought a lot of house plants it is so frustrating that the whole plant world because like the plants itself are you know a piece of nature and then we just have to go and wrap it in the plastic tub thing. I've been trying my best to look on platforms like Facebook Marketplace and Buns and LetGo and OfferUp and Craigslist just for people who might be moving or look for local plant swaps in my area because some people do get rid of their plants and that is something that you can find. Even in my Buy Nothing group I've noticed a lot of people posting like little plants or even like little snippings of their plants to be propagated and so that's like definitely a very great way to grow a plant. You can literally start it from scratch, you can propagate something or you can plant seeds and that would avoid a little bit of the plastic and then again just looking for things that friends and neighbors and other people are giving away is a great solution but I have definitely bought a couple of plants in the last few weeks so I hope this video was helpful these are definitely like the biggest areas of waste that are still in my life and I'm continually changing continually adapting continually learning new things and so hopefully in the future maybe a year from now this list will be drastically different maybe I'll label this video like wasteful things I still buy 2019 and then we could come back in a year and we can see how I've grown and how my habits have changed and like new things that I'm doing in my life. You know, I'm up for that idea. Let's do it. I also by no means think that what works for my life 
is going to be what works for you. So maybe there's other areas of your life where you do still create waste and areas that I create waste in that you don't need to. Again, I think that in the end, it's really about the journey and remembering that it's about your long-term impact and what's going to keep you on this lifestyle and also about voting with your dollar and asking for change. Not stressing, but also asking yourself, what can I pare down on? How can I minimize what I'm consuming in general? What can I get secondhand? What can I make from something that I already own, whether that's propagating a plant or making a tool in your life out of a piece of old material from an old scrappy t-shirt. There are so many different ways that you can reduce your waste and reduce your impact on the planet. And also keeping in mind that it's not just about the number of trash items that you create and the amount of physical waste that you're creating, but it's also about just your general impact on the planet. How can you get things locally? How can you get things made and manufactured more sustainably? We have to remember that most of a product's waste actually comes before the final product is at our door. Most of a product's waste is made as it's being manufactured, and so we have to remember that and we have to look into that and just keep all of our options open. And if something's stressing you out, don't let it stress you out. Keep looking for solutions and you'll find it in time. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope that it made the whole lifestyle a little bit more accessible. Let me know what your favorite low waste swaps have been. Let me know what areas of your life you're still creating waste in. And I can hopefully help provide some sort of solution in future videos. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, which is always linked down below. And don't forget that if you want to support this channel, you can do so by joining my exclusive Patreon where you have access to all of my videos early before they go live and you also have access to all of my podcasts before they go live and you have access to the secret podcast as well which I post every single Tuesday so until then no matter where you find me whether it's there also in my email newsletter because there's lots of areas apparently that you can find me in remember to stay happy humble and forever compassionate and I love you guys so so much bye